Recording. Is it okay like that? Yeah, that's fine. Right. Just be comfortable. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Sliding up your sofa. It's chill. Yeah. So, do you want to have your own your own show like a bigger station? I would love that. Yeah. I really would. Um, I love being on the hospital radio show. So, like the idea of making people feel better. And yeah. I always think the best way of getting better is through laughter yeah. and I'm a bit stupid with stuff and do mistakes so I hope I make people laugh <laughs> um, yeah I would I would love my goal like it was everyone's goal isn't it like to well to be like the best you can and I know yeah. what my personal goal in my head would be to be at a big station but yeah. I would want to still do the hospital radio so if I oh, was good. lucky enough to be at a bigger station yeah. more commercial like I still would want to do my volunteering at the hospital. I wouldn't want to give that up. Yeah. So I'd love to try and work that in. Because you have so much freedom at my station. But in my head I've got a goal of where I want to be. And Like with any company, yeah. like when you do things, you have sort of the big boys that you want to work with. And yeah. yeah, it's the same for me. But I would still do, I'd still do hospital alongside if I could. So, yeah, I am... Um, yeah, I would love to be on my own show on like a bigger <laughs> station. Yeah, it's just natural. And I do the best I can and that is definitely one of yeah. my goals. Good, yeah. Okay. What's um like when you think of yourself in the future, mm -hmm. what's the vision that you have for yourself as a radio DJ? So So in my head <laughs> there is like a main company that I would like station that I would love to work for yeah um but that's because that's where it was started for me and that's BBC like yeah I would love to work for BBC radio it doesn't have to be radio one yeah um at what first it was like radio one is where I want to yeah. be <laughs> but realistically I'm like oh, it's radio one <laughs> but um yeah like any BBC radio so when I go home my mum listens to I think it's six live and uh what else does she listen to like BBC radio two and stuff so stuff that I wouldn't always yeah. listen to and um yeah, it's really open like and I've been researching more of like other BBC stations. Yeah. And I think my goal would be BBC because that's where my passion for radio started because of them in a way I would say. Yeah. I think it was always in me, I just didn't know it and they by winning that competition it it really drew it out of me. So for me, if I was to ever like the top of my goal would be BBC. That is and that doesn't even mean like a big one, that that could be like a local BBC because I know Kent, yeah. there's BBC Kent, there's BBC, there's the one in Brighton, East Sussex section um, of it. I was yeah, confused, but, um, it to yeah. Well. So, like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, if I was like, oh, you want to go for the big radio one? And I'm like, no, not necessarily, just BBC. Yeah. Because that, for me, that company brought out that passion for me, made me realise it. So, yeah. I would love to work for those. But then I listen to all radio. I don't just listen to radio like BBC all the time. I listen to Heart, which cracks me up. I love it's Heart. It's so funny because they're yeah. hilarious, aren't they? <laughs> I love listening to Heart and that like, Mark Bryant show. Just when I drive home back home to Ken and yeah. um, to visit family, I like, always do it at like a weekend. And I've got like his car classics on and stuff. I'm like, I love this. Yeah, yes. And a bit of Jason Donovan show. Yeah. Oh, I love that he's back. And, yeah. So literally. Like BBC was where I've always wanted my heart to be, but I yeah. would. Uh, but then I've also got like growing up, my mum always went for a phase of listening to Heart all the time. Then yeah. we had one called KMFM in Maidstone that we listened oh, to yeah. all the time, and then obviously she's always dabbled with Radio One and all these yeah. different stations. So any one of those would be like a massive goal for me, and like Capital yeah. in London would be amazing. Um, but yeah, like radio, like BBC would be amazing. But all of them are up there for me because wow. I've been brought up listening to all of them at different times. So, yeah. Yeah. Like anyone yeah. else would be like, please don't try me. <laughs> I love that. So, yeah. Cool. But I don't know if I'm the right style for them. I think I mess up too much. It's fine. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm like, oh. but, yeah. So, that would be my goal ultimately. Oh. What was the hardest thing you found about doing radio? Um. Oh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Uh, so the music love came natural to me, and the talking, as you can tell, <laughs> was quite natural to me. Um, 
I would say having that that self confidence of yeah. I can do it because it is a thing like this media and everyone's like oh yeah you have to be really good and outstanding to do that like modelling yeah. people are like you have to be like a supermodel and you have to be amazing oh, like, God, yeah. like everyone ha it has that stigma that yeah you have to be really amazing to do it and you have to have that self confidence and unfortunately in the industry like music industry you have to be a bit a lot of people are quite arrogant, but they're the ones that have succeeded a bit. And it's like, oh, I'm not yeah. like that at all. I'm really actually quite shy. Um, like, I'm really nervous <laughs> coming in. I was like, no, I was. Just like I was saying, like, I, I talk like this a lot, and that's when I'm nervous. So, um, yeah, I would say having that confidence. And my mum really boosted me with that. Um, and I, I can't remember what it was. I read something. She was like, well, why can't you go for it? What, who's to say, it doesn't matter where you come from or what you, yeah. your education, like, if you've got that passion in you, you should go for it. And I was like, yeah. And then I can't remember where I heard the quote. I heard a quote, I heard someone say, like, these job, jobs are around and someone needs to fill them. Mm. It doesn't matter who it is, it's a job, it's available. Yeah. Like, there's, there's no restrictions. So I, as soon as I heard that, I was like, well, that's true. Like, someone needs to do the job, so why can't I? Like, it doesn't matter on my background or anything. Um, yeah, I think even if I didn't go to uni, I would still want to do it, and I'd still still be where I am, but I think it was just taking me a bit, maybe a bit longer, or maybe a bit less. Maybe I'd be more determined and be like, I don't have these qualifications. So, um, yeah, I would definitely say the biggest goal was being the confidence in myself like even now after I do a show I'll be like oh I, every time I finish a show I phone my mum without oh, wow. fail as soon as I'm off air yeah. and I leave the station I'm walking home I phone my mum and go mum was it okay and she'll be like whatever she'll say feedback yeah. she was like that was hilarious I can't believe you mentioned <laughs> that on there I can't, yeah. I'm, just, I'm always like oh my god was that okay and she's just like it was good it's your character like yeah. the best thing you can do is show people who you are yeah, and what exactly. you're like and yeah. she said she always says, you've been cracking me up for years, between you and your brother, like, it's been hilarious. She's like, so, it's nice to see you on a bigger scale now, and hear yeah. you on a bigger scale, and I'm like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, the self-confidence, I'd say, is the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, I always knew I could do it, but getting there. Would do it. And I would say persistence. Yeah. Like, that's a big thing. You can give up loads, and for a while, I didn't give up. I've never gave up, but I've put it on the back burner for quite a few years yeah. so I let other things take over and be more important yeah. and other people get in the way of stuff and I wish I hadn't now but that's taught me a valuable lesson as in no one else is going to get you where you are and for me yeah. I'm most happiest when I'm succeeding in my dreams and my life goals that's good so what's the point in having a dream if you're not going to succeed in it like exactly. yeah there's no point in it you're just going to be unhappy so uh, things have got in the way of it and I've just decided no it's a learning curve I'm gonna learn yeah. from that like nothing or no one's now gonna even hold me back so good and things happen for a reason exactly and yeah. it's built my confidence more and I've believed in myself more yeah by doing stuff like that so yeah I'd say that was my biggest thing it weren't like in a way it weren't my education or it weren't oh god can I do this it's just like yeah. will I be good enough so like, actually yeah like I feel I can do it so why don't I just go with it just go with your gut instinct my gut instinct was always saying so go yeah, with it exactly. so yeah, yeah. I say that's the biggest thing for me good yeah. yeah yeah that's inspiring yeah that's a, sounds really lame don't it it's typical <laughs> like oh my god to go with what you believe in but um, I hit a time in my life where it sounds really cliche, but things just come into place and realising radio is what I wanted to do was one of the times. Yeah. And then more recently I've had another life event that's happened and it's made me go like, oh, I shouldn't stop believing in myself. Like, I should just carry on and yeah. go with... And these things actually just reassure me that that way of mind frame for me, it they they sort of there to question it and then something happens and you carry on like no I'll stick exactly, my gut instinct yeah. like there's a reason why I've stuck with it and it's, it's got me where I am <laughs> and when I have ignored it I didn't make it to where I wanted to be or it's it's really delayed me in radio and I'm like no stick with that gut instinct so yeah yeah it's so cliche isn't it <laughs> but yeah <laughs>
So, because I, I remember at work when you used to talk about it, and when you wanted to do the ra the radio thing, yeah. and you'd like um, send out emails and stuff, and yeah. and and I, I feel like really proud of you. Oh, thank when, you. When you when you said that you got the thing with co Coast Train. Yeah, but you've been there on my journey. You've been there from the beginning, so I think you yeah. were the first person I told me. I was like, oh, well, I've emailed loads of radio upstairs. stations. Yeah, I think upstairs at work, and I popped yeah. up to see you. I was like, I've emailed loads of radio stations. And you're like, ooh. So, and I think I kept giving you updates the whole time. Yeah, exactly. And then you came on my show, and now we're doing this. So, yeah, you've literally followed me on my journey, which yeah. is really nice. You've been there from, like, the beginning of my Brighton journey, which is great. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Thank you all. <laughs> oh, that's alright. So, so thinking back on when you were younger, what advice would you give yourself then? Oh, we saying like little or like I'd just generally? I'd say about five years ago. Oh my god, how old was I five years ago? <laughs> oh god, I graduated like five years ago. <laughs> so five years ago. Okay, that's a really good point in my life. Um, so I was just graduating, but I was also getting a little bit lost, if that makes sense. Because I was like, yeah. oh my god, now I've got to do and go out and do stuff. And and yeah, a lot of different the changes in my life happened then. And new people came into my life. So I would say, it's weird, I was at my most happiest, like, five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Because um, I was at uni and I was just finishing. But also, I also wasn't, I was just starting a major change in me and not always the best change so if I was to give myself advice back then from now I'd say um, literally go with what feels right and yeah. uh, oh, what did I say? don't get distracted don't get distracted <laughs> by things <laughs> um, or people yeah. yeah I think you can easily get distracted and even though I was trying something different in my life at the time, which was great. Yeah. Like, put my goals first. Okay. I put other people's goals first. And I supported them. Which was great, but I should have... That was a peak time for me in my life, just finishing uni, when I should have been out yeah. of uni and gone, I'm going to contact all these stations, I'm going to yeah. get as much as I did, and I didn't. I was a bit like, I'm going to chill a little bit, which you need to chill once you've just graduated, because <laughs> it's so stressful. Yeah. But... I would say like I would then put other people first so I'd say always put yourself first I know it sounds really selfish but I've had a lot of people say to me when I've mentioned this in the past they said it's not yeah. selfish it's in a way you've got everyone around you and your friends and that's fine don't be selfish to them but in the way of like at the end of the day you're your own book you know your own story so exactly, it's, you're solo yeah. You've got your support unit, but they're not you. So they'll be with you whatever part of your journey, which I've noticed with all my friends and that. Yeah. My journey that I've gone through probably <laughs> since five years ago, yeah. people, the right people stuck with me. The people that weren't right for me have disappeared yeah. over that time. So, yeah, you're literally writing your own story. And don't let people overtake it or edit it too much because yeah. you're the one that misses out. You're the one that ends up delayed. So, yeah, I would sit down with myself and go, <laughs> focus, concentrate. If yeah. then people that you got distracted by really are cared about yeah, you exactly. or into you, then they will stick with you. Like, they should push you to do your stuff more. So, yeah, yeah I would say be selfish, especially yeah. at that age. And in your 20s, I think you're allowed to be selfish because that's when you're making a name for yourself. It's when you're writing yourself. Exactly and pushing yourself and finding yourself so yeah I would be like be selfish and do stuff for you and not for other people that's, that's great say. that's really good yeah it's a bit deep but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's good okay. um, yeah not normally this serious I swear <laughs> my shows aren't normally this serious <laughs> that's okay because it's just, it's just we're just being real yeah it's true yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Crazy joke, sorry, really lame. <laughs> <laughs> I like really do lame jokes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. One last question. Okay, oh, last one. Um, what 
advice would you give to um, a boy or a girl who wants to be a radio DJ? I would say, what would I say? As soon as you realise that's what you want to do, just go out and try and do it. Contact stations, contact, and don't necessarily think big ones. Yeah. You learn so much at the little independence, you get so much more opportunity. Yeah. So if I'd known I wanted to do this when I was younger, so if I was 15, 16, I would have contacted my hospital radio station straight away and my local ones. I would have gone to them like as soon as I knew to yeah. start my training because I would have stayed for them for years and done uni and that. So I would say as soon as you realise that's what you want to do and it's your passion and your love, full heartedly jump in it with two feet. Contact local stations because they are your best way of starting out. Like like Chris Moyles, he started yeah. out on hospital radio. So many radio DJs <laughs> started out on hospital radios. And when I was little, when I was little, it was about pirate radio stations as well. Oh, yeah, so yeah, exactly. Like Trevor Nelson <laughs> was on, he had a private radio station that he used to work yeah. on in London. That, um, yeah, all those like the little ones that people go, oh, you just do local or yeah. hospital radio. Don't look down on it. That's where you start. That's where you find your style. That's where you can mess up. Because exactly. everyone, some of them, some local ones, people don't even listen to it. I know that sounds harsh, but some, like, people, there won't be many listeners. And that's yeah. the great time to make your name for yourself. And the people that really like you there will follow you through your career. Yeah. And when you are successful, then you always have to say thank you to them. Because they're the ones that maybe have blogged about you or commented about you or told. Yeah. Even if... Even like back in the day before there was a whole internet when I was little, the way I learned about DJs and pirate, like pirate radio stations, yeah. word of mouth, word yeah, of mouth, there was a station back home and the way we heard about it was when one of the girls started talking about it and a few people started talking about it and it's so lame but in the girls' toilets at my school, like, so I would have wrote about it on the toilet, you should know when people graffiti, it sounds really yeah. but on the toilet door yeah. there was... Um, check out this station, it's awesome. And that's how I learned about it. On the back of a toilet door, whilst I'm sitting there <laughs> reading a comment. Like, like that's how you used to learn about stuff. Word of mouth is the biggest way of getting yourself known. So I would say start off, have your goals for whatever you want. They could be your big stations, they could be a little station, but that's your personal goal. Um, and just find your own way of getting there. Whether and now it's great because you've got loads of social media stuff, so you can yeah, just exactly. blog, you can do um, YouTube channels like this, you can you can do podcasts, which yeah. is great. I'm still quite old school, like <laughs> I really want to do podcasts, but I was like, oh, I like, I like, I guess I do it. I get, I want to do my own podcast, I do, <laughs> but I get a thrill from being live on air too much. Yeah, and I know if I do podcasts, I would edit it. And I know you can do live podcasts, but yeah. like, I don't know, like. I love all the technology stuff, but I'm still not good at it. Like, <laughs> when I get to know it a bit more, then I'm, I'm fine. But, um, yeah, I would say, like, like, go through these podcasts. Now, it is great, but yeah. go back to old school radio. And that is, it's not, see, I think, like, pirate radio is now not as big as it was because you've got podcasts that's taken over. Exactly, yeah. Which is cool. <laughs> But it takes the thrill away from it yeah. a little bit. It was a bit naughty. And this pirate radio is really popular in the yeah. 90s. Oh they? my god, my childhood of the 90s of pirate radio was just like, oh. Like everyone, yeah, you would listen to it and you'd think, oh my god, I'm being naughty by listening to it. Am I going to get caught just listening to it? And, like, and then if it would yeah. cut off halfway for a summer or show, you know that's because they've had to quickly shut it down and go. And like, yeah, I think like go back to hospital radio and old school stuff like that it, yeah. it is a dying industry at times and general radio but like especially hospital radio like stuff like that it's all charity and it's so expensive to keep stuff running yeah. so I would say go and contact as many radio stations as you can but don't just think of the big ones start at the small ones because that's yeah. where you will learn all the grounding that you need that's where you'll learn so many skills there's so many people to give give you advice and that want to help you yeah. and and you will learn so much there that you won't necessarily learn at a big station because you've got your own producers and you've got that. Like I do, it, literally do it all myself, and it is a big wake up call, but it is great. <laughs> and I know that when I do, if I get to go to a bigger station <laughs> any time, like 
I can be like, well, I'm my own producer. I'm on air. I'm doing all yeah. my pro producer at the same time. I'm not just talking. I'm, yeah. I'm in control of everything. And literally multitasking. That gives me the biggest boost, Yeah. I exactly. think. And it makes me look more skilled. Because I'm like, I can actually do everything on my own in one room. Like, yeah, you learn that. But, so I'd say just go for it. Yeah. But definitely contact local stations and hospital because that's where your education will really start. And that's where you find your style because you get to be your style, not a different one, not being branded or being yeah. moulded. You can mould yourself. So, yeah, contact as many stations as you can, smaller ones. Definitely start off there. Yeah. That's great. That was a really long winded answer. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. This is so good and so inspiring. So exciting. Oh, and I hope other you. radio DJs out there listen to this. Oh, I hope so. Let me know what you think. Yeah, definitely. Cause, yeah. Like tweet me and stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I will, yeah. If you want to give me a pie or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Can I have a hug? Yay! Oh, wait. I'm going to slide up your sofa. I'm going to slide. Yay. <laughs> oh, that's oh, fun. so good. Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. And I got my nice cup of tea that you supplied me with. I was hanging, hanging onto the oh. sofa. <laughs> I was sliding <laughs> off your sofa. I was I was like, oh, I'm sliding. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most awkward sofa ever. Oh. Hey, I'll agree with that. I'm all but the best way is to... This way. Mm. We should have just sat there and interviewed like that. I would have been happy with that. I, would, I bet I now find... I oh, already missed it like this, Arwa. Oh, we did that whole thing. I bet I look really awkward the way I'm sitting, and this is like the most.